Hey, uh, Shadur Joe Rico, My Life Sports Radio. First of all, congratulations for a fantastic performance by you and your teammates. Can you talk a little bit about some of your feelings <clears throat> pregame, kind of how you thought? I know your father also gave a great pregame speech that I got to witness. Mm-hmm. Kind of, uh, it was amazing. Can you talk a little bit about the focus and the level of intensity prior to the game? Because you guys really showed everyone what you could do. Um, the focus was there all the way. We've been there, we talked about it, we had great preparation, and we knew what we was going to get. So the, when we go out for pregame warm ups, I'm like, okay, this feel, it's giving me flashbacks of just uh, things I've seen before. So then we go out there first drive, and I'm like, okay, they're not moving different. They're not moving way faster than, you know, the um, teams I used to play. So then I'm like, okay, cool. In practice, we getting we getting a way faster look from one defense than we get in. So, I feel like we just out schemed them, and we just had a uh, just a great day. Shador, when you went back on film, you evaluated your own performance clearly in the school record 510 passing yards. But how did you feel you played? I feel like it was all right. I feel like it was cool. I feel like I, I missed a lot of stuff. I, we could have bigger numbers and stuff like that. So it's just like. I don't really like, I watched the game, I seen all like the bad clips yesterday and stuff like that and it left a bad taste in my mouth really about it. So I'm just motivated to get out there and just have more perfection and just a better game. Hey Shador, Jake Schwann is DMVR. Just wanted to ask you, do you think you're the best quarterback in the country? That's a biased question, of course I think that. I feel like everybody, I think majority of quarterbacks is competitive, we don't think that. So that's just for everybody to decide, but of course, personally, I feel like that. Shooter, a lot of you guys are new to Colorado. Do y'all feel like you really bought into this rivalry week? The weight that comes with it? I mean, what's the weight? All it is is game two for us. Just a focus. We already got game one out the way. Um, that's behind us. I don't even like talking about it, thinking about it no more. We just got to be on to the next thing. So it's a preparation factor. And everybody knows, okay, cool, game one is fine, but we got to move on from that. So it's going to be, it's going to be um, more locked in, I'll say, less mistakes. I understand it was our first time playing together and really being in the foxhole with the guys and really understanding I could count on this guy, I could count on the guys around me, I could count on the whole line to be there for me. And really just having that first test with each other and everybody fast, you know, so it's just time to, Stop making the same mistakes, and we can't do that again. Uh, Mickey Edwards, you sports report. You played a phenomenal game on Saturday. You already know that. But as you look at the tape and kind of see any miscues there, what do you see kind of on the maybe more negative side on how Saturday, like an overall performance? Overall performance, I feel like we got to get in and out the huddle faster. We can't we can't be slow getting to the line of scrimmage. Um, we wasted a timeout, and we know at some point that could come back and haunt us, you know, in the, in the game. So we just can't make those simple mistakes. We can't put the ball on the ground. i got to throw the ball away sometimes. Can't take negative plays. Um, and just understand, okay, in practice, it's, it's going to look the same out there. So understanding, okay, in the game plan, what, whatever we got, we just got to get more reps, more reps at it, make sure everybody is in the right places so my eyes go straight to the reads and stuff like that. Um, and that's it. Having me pull the daily camera, uh, Shador, after the game the other day, coach mentioned needing to get more efficiency out of the ground game on offense after reviewing the, the film. What do you feel like has to happen there? Get the ground game going a little bit more, maybe take the pressure off of you and the, the passing game a little bit? Well, I feel like it's not really no pressure on me, really. It's like every everything we caught, it was there. It was just I made the read or I didn't. And there's just some okay, cool, we got to tighten up. We can't miss certain reads. We can't miss that type of stuff. Can't miss certain throws. So the run game is it, going to be there. We just got to lean on it. And we just we just take what the defense give us. If they're going to give us, if they're going to let us throw the ball, we're going to throw the ball. If they're going to let us run, we're going to run. So it's just nobody has um, prize of the game. Nobody knows, okay, cool, we're going to go for this. Like We didn't know we was going for 510 yards passing. Like, we didn't know that. Well, however many yards, five to nothing. We didn't know that. It just happened. Somehow, some way, it just happened. So, last time I, we had that many yards was in the scrimmage, the first scrimmage. 
So then it was like, dang, we really went 500. That's crazy. <laughs> Hey, Shador McMiller, Fox 31. Obviously, you guys set a school record with four receivers, having over 100 yards. Can you take us into all the amount of work that you put in with your guys and also along with Coach Lewis? Because it seemed like he called a great game and you executed that game plan basically to perfection. Yeah. It was almost perfection. It wasn't. And uh, I miss Coach Reed, so that's still haunting me right now, you know. So it's just taking what the defense gives us, honestly, and knowing it's a trust factor with the receivers, knowing that they're going to be in the right places where I need them to be. Because we talk about everything. Coach, coach, coach gets mad because I always talk about the uh, one-off situations, like to where you just got to understand. They may have just got you that play. That's it. But I like being very detailed and really just having answers for everything the defense does. So just over prepared, really. So I feel like that's what helped us get to having those numbers in that game. and. When you get the ball in an explosive player's hand, that's what happens. And that's not the only – that's just that's, – that was just their game this week, this past week. We don't know whose game is going to be next week, week after. So anybody can have any amount of receiving yards. We're not thinking about that. It's more about where the read takes us and just being in the right spot. Shadour, Brian Howell from the Bowl Daily Camera. Um, you guys now have tape out there that teams can see of this Colorado team. But do you – you as a student of the game, do you kind of like – the chess match that now goes into it, and you've now got to see what they're going to give you and try to play off of that? No, we, we kind of dictate what they're going to do. Like, we're not thinking about, dang, what they're going to give us, like, because we already know. We already know what most likely they're going to think. We know what they're going to do. So it's just like, that's just what it is. So we just focus on, okay, how can we do this better? Like, how can I not miss this read? How can we get off the sideline faster and stuff like that? That's, that's, that's really simply it. If we just execute what Coach calls and do the right thing, he gives us the tools to make every play right almost. So if we're able to do that at a high level, then it's going to be hard to stop. Shador, Ariel, or Sue, the Nine News. Um, what have you learned about this rivalry with Nebraska since you've been here? And like, who's kind of taught you about it? Um, what has the team taken from it? And what are you really looking forward to in this game, specifically on Saturday? No more red in the facility. <laughs> I got to take the red shirt off my website with my clothes this week. I got to make that call when I get locker room. So that, that's really, that's really, we just know the history of it. Colorado, we don't like Nebraska. <laughs> so, so that's just what it is. We just got to focus on that. Okay, cool. We don't like Nebraska, but that's not going to, that's not really going to change like the preparation or anything like that. Cause we prepare like, Nobody likes us because we know we're going to get everybody's best game. So it's just another thing on top of, like, a little bit more motivation, just a little bit, but we got to already be motivated off the road. Hey, Shador, you told us in the off season that uh, you're going to have too much time to prepare for TCU, and we saw what happened. Now it's a little bit of a different challenge. How do you personally and Coach Lewis microwave that process having less time this, this time around? I would say I just understand the scheme. I really like learning and understand like the coaches and their schemes and stuff like that. And understand, you know, what trees they come from and stuff like that. So it's really just being a student, knowing this week, okay, cool, we're not gonna have as, as much time as we had. So now a lot of time gets cut out. Like a lot of time it's more focused on just watching football, football, football. Different teams that run the same scheme, different um prior games that I played in the past that run a similar scheme, stuff like that, understanding their players and really knowing them intimately. So that's really it. They got a lot of talented players. They got good D linemen, they got good backers, they got good D's. So it's like just being very, just understanding what, what we got on the table, understanding what they got. Carlos, it's your college playing DSM. <clears throat> When you talk about fourth down, fourth and two, down by seven, what was going through your mind? And how much does your work with Tom Brady impact those serious stressful moments? Again? All right, I'm gonna answer the first question. You gotta ask second one again. <laughs> All right, so the fourth and two, it's like I know everybody, I'm up there, I'm like, I'm like, fourth and two, dang. So then I know everybody's feeling like, dang, what are they gonna do right here? And I'm in my head like, 
and it's fourth and two. But I've been there before, you know, so it's like this is not my first fourth and two game on the line situation. So I'm like, okay, execute the play call. That's it. If that ain't there, then extend the play, do something, make it happen. But like, I'm human too, so how y'all feel, y'all be like, dang, it's 4 2 what's gonna happen? And on the 3rd and 16 with Trap, it was like, find a one on one, find a best matchup, and put it there, and that's it. So 4 2 is like, ain't no way we're losing this game. It don't matter what's going on. The throw ain't there, we gonna get it some way, somehow. Like, we're not going out like that. So that's it. And how much did you work with Tom Brady that you were working on uh, impact those situations? It impacts it a lot because um, four and two, it's not a big pressure situation to me because every down, every down you should treat it the same like it's a high pressure situation, like games on the line because you don't know when the players could dictate the game. You don't know what's down, what it could be, interception, fumble, anything like that. So every play is a seriousness it has to me. That's just more serious because, okay, game on the line. But to me, every play is a serious. But working with Tom, it was just talking to him and understanding, okay, how to improve each week. Uh, he texted me after the game, don't be satisfied. <laughs> like, it's cool. So it was cool hearing from him knowing he's still watching and stuff like that. But just working with him, it really helped me just understand, don't focus on the good things. We did that. that that's that's not a name. We're going to do that. Regardless, focus on the bad things. Focus on the things that we wasn't able to do at a high level. So improve that, then you got full armor everywhere. But if you just focus on the good, the, the, the things and the light, doing okay, Dylan had um, a lot of receiving yards, but it's okay, Dylan, on this one route, you got you to gotta make this decision. So it's just really just like highlighting the, the, the bad things that we did and watching it over and over and over and giving us that bad feeling like we can't make the same mistake. Two more, go ahead, Pat. Two more, uh, Pat Graham, so for us. Um, congratulations. Um, when you're at the center of the college universe like you guys are right now, and you've had the week that you did, how do you stay grounded? How do you stay humble? Or is, do you not want to stay grounded and humble? Do you want to just I don't know, celebrate the moment? I mean, this ain't my first time here. We we had it at Jackson. It was just, now it's just a bigger stage, bigger level to where it's on ESPN and TV all the time, like all day. But I don't. I don't really. I'm off social media. Not too many people have, have my phone number. I don't know when I really keep with me. So it's like I don't. I don't see none of that stuff. Honestly, I don't. I don't watch TV at home. I would probably put on YouTube, watch full games or something here and there, like game film. But that's it. Well, I don't really. I'm not. I'm disconnected from that type of stuff because I know what it could lead to. I know what it could lead to. So that's why I always reference like my past because I feel like. Like God put me in a position to where I went through all these trials and everything in my prior years and stuff in college to understand the different situations and everything that I'm gonna go through to prepare me for this year. So now it's just it's just regular. I don't really have no feeling towards anything. Hey, sure. uh, Tony Casola, Buffalo's Wire. You you talk about that human element or the emotion of the game. Can you give us a little sneak peek what's going through your mind trying to watch the defense seal the game for you guys last weekend? Really, it's just me talking to the whole line. That's, I'm not watching the defense. I, I just, I just don't like watching because I don't, I don't. I feel like when I watch, it may something may happen, so I just don't watch. So then I just, I just get the guys together and tell them, like, "Hey, bro, we're gonna have to have another drive. We're gonna get it, bro. Ain't no way we're losing this game." So it's really like a real intimate moment with the old line, and that's why I feel like that's, I feel like that's the my highlight of the game is really being able to look those guys in the eyes and know. Like, they got my back. And we're all there mentally. We're all there knowing that no matter what happens, we're going to go there, drive down the field, we're going to score. We got to have another one, another one, another one. So however things played out, mentally we was ready. So that's really that's really our main mindset, I'll say offensively. And no one just, no matter what, if they're doing good, if they're doing bad, they don't. That shouldn't affect us. We should have to want to score every drive that we can. And if we don't, then we kind of failed ourselves. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Drew. Appreciate it.